Welcome back to the Webby and O'Neill channel. Thanks for joining us for another video. In today's video, we're going to discuss Gary Neville and Roy Keane's comments that they made on the overlap about Eric Ten Hag, the team, and in particular, Bruno Fernandes. How are you feeling today, first off? I'm all right today. It's cold, uh, and I know it's cold everywhere where you are. Yeah, I wish I actually had my gloves on last night because after me making that joke on yesterday's video about you wearing gloves in tribute to Martial, my boiler packed up. So there was no heating, no hot water last night, and I had to get an engineer around, which is... Fortunately, sorted it all out. Good man. But we're nice and warm in here today. Get your thoughts and opinions in on today's video as ever. And don't forget to smash that like button. I'm going to start with Roy Keane's comments that yep. he's made on Eric Ten Hag. They are stuck between a rock and a hard place because, again, you are Manchester United. The onus is even when you're at home, you flex your muscles and, more importantly, put fear into the opponent's mindsets. But teams are playing Manchester United now and there is no fear anymore. I think teams are going to Old Trafford now and they enjoy it. Your first thoughts on them comments? Uh, well, one of the comments, fear teams coming to Old Trafford. No, they don't fear Manchester United. United, are, they're a broken side. Loads of injuries. Roy doesn't take that into account. It's not the same team. Uh, we're weak. We're toothless up front. We're not scoring enough goals. The style of play isn't the right way to be playing uh, at home. Never mind away. Uh, yeah. It's not working. When you look at, uh, for instance, Maguire, Maguire was fourth, fifth choice months ago, uh, and people are waiting to get him back. The team is broken from what it was last year. It's not got a regular 11. It's not got a potent uh, attack. We know that. Uh, the scoring ratio is absolutely terrible. Uh, but teams coming to Old Trafford, no. They, they know they can come at United. They know that United play open football. Uh, and the two wide in the uh, in the midfield, everyone knows that. I see comments coming in on a regular basis, just describing we are so open, easy to exploit. And if you look at the Tottenham game, 38% possession, Tottenham every time they came at us, freedom of the park, uh, weak. Uh, the team is just poor at the moment. It's not functioning right. All you can hope for is for the players to get back. All the players. So but the injuries this season, it's just basically shown that Manchester United have got a real lack of squad depth and a quality to it then, hasn't it? Because of the amount of injuries we've suffered and players having to come in and it's just highlighted that. I think I think it's not just the, the players and the, the depth of the squad. Uh, it's what it is. Manchester United have to remove certain players. There's a few more to go. I think the attitude in and around the camp and when some of these players are given opportunities, they don't take it because they've got other ideas. They're leaving. You know, you look at Marshall, his attitude has been, I'm leaving, I'm not signing a contract. You know, you've got players like that. You've got Donny van der Beek, who's just gone out on loan. A player who was highly thought of, hasn't really cut it, but always around the squad. It's not very helpful having players who everyone knows uh, is either on the way out or just not good enough. And there's lots of other players we can highlight. I mean, if you look at McTominay, you look at Maguire, these players were trying to be pushed out of the club in the summer. So the harmony is not right. It's completely changed from what it was last year. Ten Hag has tried to move players on and it's not worked. The squad, uh, the fragile mentality of it mm. is just so poor. It's like once something goes wrong, then they, they can't fix it. Yeah, yeah, sometimes certain players just capitulate. We've seen it, especially last season in the away games. Yeah. And we have seen instances of it this season at home and away, though. Yeah, it's the mentality side of it, the physical side of it. Uh, it's, it's just it's just not there. And it's something Eric Ten Hag is struggling to cope with. Uh, and I think any manager would cope with what's going on uh, behind the scenes. Wouldn't cope. Couldn't cope. Yeah. Couldn't cope with it. Yeah. Uh, I think it's very difficult. Uh, to like assess what's actually going on from, from this position. I think it's very difficult even for Ten Hag to understand why it's all gone wrong. Mm. There is lots of things. Roy doesn't sort of like point them out, do you know what I mean? Yeah, we have but, seen repeated patterns as well in games, especially when the opposition is scoring. It's been, especially from the start of the season, you know, we go way back to when we played Brighton at home. We always can see goals where it's the cutbacks to the edge of our area or just inside our area for players to latch onto to score. So it's always, for me, you know, a telltale sign that there's real problems in that midfield area with players tracking back or positionally. 
Yeah, I, 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 you know, you talk about players and what the problems is. If you go back over time, you can see it's a mentality. They're not geared up for it at times. If you look at the start of a game, we seem to concede a lot of goals more than anyone else mm -hmm. at the beginning of a game. And then you come to the second half and there it goes again. Tottenham straight away score a goal. Yeah, yeah. How many times have we seen that? That's a mentality coming on the pitch. That's the players getting together as a team. Well, you don't see them getting together as a team. It's as all like, I've got my instruction, get on there uh, and I'll see what happens. Well, the thing is, you have to work as a team. And this squad, what's in there at the moment, half of them, and I, well, I say half of them, a lot of them, have got their eyes on other things like departing Manchester United, like they're going to get sold or they're leaving. They've got other issues on and off the pitch and they're not as a team. And that's why we're conceding. Uh, and Ten Hag hasn't been able to deal uh, with that problem uh, on the pitch. Yeah, I don't think a lot of managers will be if players no. are looking to edge for moves in the summer or they actually think the days are actually numbered here at Manchester United and maybe a lot of them out there are just not putting it in. They don't want to get injuries, etc. And they're just quite happy going through the motions. But the, 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 this is the problem with the people in the background who are running the club. Players should have been moved on and the, United have been very poor in, in that side of uh, running the club uh, and bringing the right players in, yeah. they've been poor. Yes, the team is fragile. Roy, Roy's right in a lot of lot of things, but he doesn't sort of like give Eric Ten Hag any leeway of really what's going on in the club. He doesn't call mm. out the players like what we do. We give our opinion on people like Rashford, okay? That's not worked this season. That attitude on the pitch has all been wrong, the same as Marshall and lots of other people. But he seems to hold back, and especially on Rashford, the criticism. You know, it's as if to say, I'm not going in on Marcus Rashford. And as if one or two other players, he doesn't actually go in on. Yeah, he did mention him after the Wigan game, but, you know, we've seen a lot more scathing comments from Roy Keane on certain players, oh, yeah. especially on their Sky Sports. But he did mention in that quote as well that, he doesn't believe the players are taking in the manager's ideas. And to me, that's sort of favouring the players over the manager as though, like, you know, the, these, the ideas, the instructions the manager's given him, they're just maybe not good enough, so to speak. Yeah, he's, not, he's, he's going in on the manager. It's as though he feels the manager's going, the players are going to be staying. So I'm going to back the players. Uh, and at the end of the day, he should be calling these players out for not being up to scratch. Uh, some of them aren't up to scratch. The intensity of the game is actually killing them. And Roy should point this out. Other teams are matching the intensity. A lot of teams now, right, they're all playing the same way. They're all going for it. They're all closing down. They're all speed merchants and everything else like mm. that. These, the, the tackles, what you used to see in games, aren't there like it used to be, especially in Roy Keane's day but he's going at the manager and he's letting a lot of these players off the hook. And we know some of them have been there for a long time and Roy needs to call out the ones who aren't trying on the pitch. And we've some, seen some players over the last couple of months go on that pitch and put no effort over 90 minutes in and it's a disgrace. He's going at the manager and the manager has got a million, million problems. But the players, to me, it's self-inflicted. They've got other ideas about what to do and a lot of them are just looking to get away or they know they're being forced out. Yeah, some good points there. Let us know what you think about Roy Keane's comments in the uh, chat below. Just going to move on to what Gary Neville said and in particular about Bruno Fernandes. Um, he said that Bruno Fernandes' positional play is a key reason for Eric Ten Hag's struggles in attack. And he said any team that is anything at all, you see repeated patterns Bruno Fernandes is obviously the best player in terms of talent. He must be told to go and do what you want. I don't see Ten Hag say to him, get back in like you would see Guardiola when a player goes out of position for a minute or two minutes and he's on the sidelines getting back into your position. And you do actually see Guardiola doing that with his players. But do you see that with Ten Hag as well? I've seen him, especially at the Newcastle away game, seeing him on the sidelines screaming at Anthony Martial, doing the same thing with Rashford. But it's like they didn't carry on the instructions that they were given from the manager. I think when you look at Bruno overall, and you know, any man worth his salt, and lots and lots of people out there have said the same thing. Bruno Fernandes, when he first came to United, 
was up there on the edge of the box, running into the mm -hmm. box. He had a certain way of playing football, certain positions and that. But what it is, is the captain now. Yeah. Uh, and he's, I think he feels as though he's got to do everything he can to help the team. Yeah. And I think uh, Ten Hag has told him, like, you've got a free role. But the thing is, as people out there have commented time and time again, that free role is no good for Manchester United. If you look at Hoyland, for instance, he's got no one there on the edge of the area doing a one-two with him, yeah. coming into the area, Bit of take, up place. Take, taking men away. It, it just seems that Manchester United are so wide open because Bruno Fernandes has got a free role. It is not the role he should be doing. Mm. He should be getting back to what he was doing when he first came to Manchester United, being up there, linking up with mm. the strikers and the wingers, not coming back into mm. left full back, right back. So it's something Ten Hag has to change, mm. uh, and clearly, and, and, and plus it, and being up there as well in the team, like you're rightly saying, to go back to the position he was playing when he more or less joined United, to then spring counter attacks. You know, if you favour up the field, you're more likely to spring good counter attacks and good opportunities. The more your players are behind the ball, you know, the more pressure you're going to invite onto your team. It's it's basic, surely. But if he, if Ten Hag is giving him a free role and inviting him to go back. Uh, and do things in the midfield and further back in the in his own penalty area, then Ten Hag clearly has a problem uh, relying on the people behind Bruno Fernandes. Yeah. So to me, Fernandes is overworked. Mm. Uh, he's, he's, out, he's trying to outthink everyone mm. uh, instead of concentrating on his game. And Ten Hag needs to get him back concentrating on his game. A, a Bruno Fernandes is an excellent player in his position and that's behind the striker helping out short passes mm. running into the box and creating uh, and receiving the ball but he's not receiving the ball at left back at left wing at right wing left midfield it's just not happening at all so mm. Ten Hag I think feels as though he can't trust a lot of his players mm. and he's asking Bruno to do too much yeah. and he's relying on him too much and Bruno took it on his shoulders and it weighs too heavy. That's how I see it. To me, at times, he's running round, and we've mm. pointed it out. Yeah. He's running round like an headless chicken, mm. uh, trying to do everything but does nothing. Yeah. And many games, he just sort of fades away because he's just running all over the, yeah. all over the pitch and there's players there looking for a pass and there's no one to pass to. Yeah. Maybe it's a case of if we had more Bruno Fernandes, the work ethic, the commitment in certain positions, we'd probably be a, a lot better team, man. Yeah, but then uh, the, on the other note, people are saying, well, on the other hand, we'd, we could do with a better manager, right? Who knows what he's doing? Yeah. So you, you're or not, a better food hygiene rating at Old Trafford at the moment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, there's lots of opinions out there of why this is going wrong and that's going wrong and it's down to the manager or it's down to the players and that, right? Yeah. But what it is, the whole, the whole team, the whole club, <laughs> everything is in... It's in turmoil at the moment. We're going through a phase uh, and he's lost control, the manager. The players have lost control and the players have got too much freedom uh, to do what they want because they can see either an exit door for themselves or for the manager and some of them just don't care. Yeah, I think it was bang on. Whereas Bruno Fernandes mm. cares. Yeah. You can see that. And unfortunately, it's, effect, it's affecting his game mm. with the role, what he's doing. Yeah. And Ten Hag needs to temper that role mm. and get him back to playing where he's best at. And that is further forward. Yeah, I'm sure if any of us were on that field and in Bruno Fernandes' shoes, the amount of frustration we would feel with other players who have been seeing putting in performances or below par performances this season. But I'll just go on to the last bit of what he said, just so you can get your opinion on it. And Keen continued to say that if you watch him at international level, he does the same. It can't all be the coaches and the managers. If you're producing magic, you forgive him. But if you're in a struggling team and he's doing that stuff, that's where it stands out and you go, you're costing us. Well, I don't think it's him costing us. I think it's the players around him. He's trying to link up, get get where they are, and they're not been able to do. They're not capable of doing the job. Uh, I think he's frustrated, uh, Bruno Fernandez. Yeah. Really frustrated. Keane does say it's, he thinks it's an actual trait of uh, Bruno's, and it's not as always an inexperienced player. Is it a case of he's got the captain's armband now? Like you say, he's got more responsibility. You know, there's a lot of frustration inside him there of players not doing the job on the field, and he just feels like he has to then 
go and try and help out, you know, go and do their job when, in effect, he's hampering his own position as well. I think making making him captain has heaped the pressure on him. There's no doubt about that. Listen, anyone who's the captain of Manchester United, there's pressure mm. every minute of the day on mm. and off the field. But I do think he feels as though he's got the responsibility of pulling these players and getting them to pull the sol- socks up mm. and do better and do more. Uh, but s- somewhere along the line, you can see the frustration is coming out and it's been highlighted more uh, in the last 12 months, mm. more than at any time, his frustrations. I think it's just the lack of quality and the ability of some of these players, what he's playing with, uh, what, he's, what he's used to, especially in international level. I think he does a good job at international level. Uh, but at this level at the moment, being captain, mm. the pressure and the weight of it all is affecting him on the pitch where he, he doesn't sort of tends to want to sit in a position yeah. and we go back to like whose responsibility is that that's the manager yeah you also got a look as well in recent games in this season we've got a few younger players who are playing in this team now you've got Hoyland up front you've got Garnacho who seems to be a regular from now on Kobe Mainu as well and for me it only really looks like Bruno who's like communicating with these players on the pitch helping them out as well I'm not saying it's just him but more often than not, you see it's Bruno who's communicating with them three players or trying to dig them out of situations and help out. I don't really see players turning around and communicating with Bruno. I've seen players argue with Bruno, Marcel and Rashford, for instance. They've argued, and that's because he's pointing the finger at them, and quite rightly so, because the work rate, what's expected of a Manchester United player, this season hasn't come from them two players. But they are not the only two players mm. You know, this club uh, has got a crisis of confidence. Mm. You know, there's a virus going through it, Mm. you know, and until that virus is sorted out and players are moved on and players brought in, this is what what we're going to expect. Hopefully, we can see change, a bit of change coming when one or two players get back and we've got a steady steady 11 on the pitch. I don't think Bruno Fernandes... And his performances on the pitch would be highlighted as much, to be honest with you, if the forwards would have been sticking the ball in the back of the net because a lot of chances yeah. created. Bruno's always in the midst of that. He's always either the assist or he's always involved in the build-up play. And like I say, if we had forwards who were finishing it, you know, he'd have his uh, name to a lot of assists this season. But I thought I'd give you a brief overview on today's video from the comments from Roy Keane and Gary Neville. As ever, please get involved in the chat. Smash that like button as well. Help support the channel. And we'll look forward to seeing your comments later on. Much appreciated. Enjoy your day. Thank you.